boys and girls. Today I'm going to discuss the elements of design. The elements of design are the tools or ingredients that an artist uses to make a successful piece of artwork. If you were cooking something in your kitchen, you would follow a recipe and use different ingredients to make that dish. For instance, if you were making some cookies, you might need some flour, some sugar, some butter, some eggs, and if you're making my favorite kind of cookie, some chocolate chips. You would put all of those ingredients in a bowl and mix them up and then make them into your cookies. An artist uses different types of ingredients. The ingredients that an artist uses are called the elements of design. I have made for you a chart that explains the different elements. This is a really good reference for you to keep throughout the year to help you with our different art projects. You can either print that out or keep that on your computer. I'm going to go over the different elements briefly so that you understand them. The first element is line. You can make lines in lots of different ways. You can make thin lines and you can make thick lines. You can make your lines go in different directions. You could make your line go across horizontally. You can make your line go up and down vertically, or you could make your line on an angle diagonally. You could make your line straight, or you could make your line curved, or maybe you'd like to make your line wavy or scalloped or dashed like the lines on a road or dotted or looped or one of my favorites, a zigzag line. You can make lots of lines in lots of different ways. Our next design element is shape. Shapes can be divided into two different categories, geometric shapes and organic shapes. You might be familiar with some geometric shapes like circles, squares and rectangles, triangles, or shapes that have a few more angles like an octagon, a hexagon, or a pentagon. Shapes are flat. They're two-dimensional. They have length and width. Shapes can also remind us of things that are in nature or be a little bit more free-formed. So you could make your shapes resemble objects that you're familiar with from nature, like an apple, or a seashell, or the flowers that are on my apron. When you make your shape three-dimensional, your shape becomes a form. Our geometric shapes take on new names when they become forms. So squares become cubes with length, and width and depth. And circles become spheres. And triangles become cones. And rectangles would be a cylinder shape, like a can or this drinking cup. You can also make forms that are a little bit more involved and resemble real objects, like this model of a person. Or maybe you'd make a form that looks like an animal or a form that looks like an instrument. There are lots of different ways to make three-dimensional forms. Our next design element is color. When light reflects 
on our eye, it makes us see the various different colors. These are all of our rainbow colors, and those six main colors can be arranged on a basic color wheel with the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and the secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. You can also describe colors by talking about their temperature. So orange, yellow, and red are the warm colors. They remind us of things that are warm, like the sun and like a fire in our fireplace. And the colors that are opposite those on the color wheel are the cool colors, green and blue and violet. When we make different values of colors, we see different tints and different shades. You might be familiar with these test strips that you can pick up in a paint store. Each of these different test strips has one color and it makes the colors get lighter by adding white, those are the tints, or darker by adding black, those are the shades. Space is the next design element, and there are two basic ways to think about space. When an artist makes a picture that shows depth, things that are far away and things that are closer to us, that's one way of using space. Another way to use space is to talk about the positive and the negative parts of the art piece. So the inside silhouette is the positive space and the rainbow behind the silhouette is the background or the negative space. And our last design element is texture. Artists can create the illusion of texture by the way they use different lines. You could make an object look smooth, like the fur on an animal, or rough, like this ball of twigs, or bumpy, like this sea urchin shell. So when you're doing your artwork, you would be combining all of those different ingredients in different ways and adding them to your artwork and mixing them together to create a successful piece of artwork. And when you combine those different design elements, you can create some beautiful pieces of artwork, like some of these famous artists that you might recognize. Some of them are abstract and some of them are more realistic. And they all use all of the different lines, shapes, colors, forms, textures, and value to make successful pieces of artwork. And when you're creating your artwork, you can use just a few of the design elements, or you can use all of the different design elements. You can make your artwork any way you'd like to, using the different elements of design. I can't wait to see that the artwork that you do this year using those different elements. Take care.